this is Miss Danielle from the Mayor Public Library, and I miss all of you guys terribly. So since we can't be all together in the building, we are going to do an online story time. And today we are going to read Lousy, Rotten, Stinking Grapes by Margie Palantini, and I love this book. This is based off a of famous fable, and it is just embellished a little bit more. This is called Lousy, Rotten, Stinking Grapes. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. Fox eyed a bunch of tantalizing grapes hanging from a vine growing high on a tree. Those juicy morsels are just for me, he said with a grin. The problem was, Fox was so high. And the grapes were so, so, so high. No matter, he said, I am sly, clever, smart. After all, I am a fox. He made a plan. Add this to that, multiply this, subtract here, and carry the one, and minus the two, and voila! Grapes. You guys see? Where's the grapes? Yep. There they are, and there's fox, and that's a long way to go. Hop, skip, jump, flying leap, and no grapes. Fox climbed out from the thicket, brushed off his coat. <sighs> Perhaps a bit of a boost is needed. But where to get a boost? <laughs> Fox turned and he grinned. Why, bear, old buddy. I say, do you like grapes? <sighs> oh, grapes? Oh. Said Bear, uh, yeah, I do, I do, yep, I like grapes. You see Bear and Fox. Excellent, look, listen, here's the plan, explained Fox. You stand here and I stand on your head there and on the count of three, you give a bit of a boost and voila, grapes. Bear looked at the plan and he looked at the grapes, and he looked at the tree, and he stared at his big front paws and thought, uh, yeah, you know there, Fox, I'm, I'm thinking, maybe I could just wrap my paws. <laughs> Interrupted Fox, bear, bear. Bear, my dear dim buddy, your job is brawn, not brain. You leave the thinking to me. After all, I am a fox. Sly, clever, smart, and I know how to get grapes. Bear shrugged. <sighs> if you say so. What do you guys think? Do you think Bear could just reach up and grab the grapes? Yeah, I think so, too. Bear stood here, and Fox climbed up and stood on top of Bear's head and counted. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox brushed off his coat, and he straightened his nose, and maybe a little more lift and thrust and oomph is needed here. Bear shrugged. <sighs> If you say so. Now where to find oomph? Pat slap, pat slap, pat slap, pat slap. Fox peered down the pond and he grinned. Why, beaver, dear pal, I say. Do you like grapes? Grapes? said Beaver. Oh, yes, indeed, indeed I do. Excellent. Look, listen, here's the plan, explained Fox. Bear stands here, and you stand on Bear's head there, and I stand on your tail, and the count of three, Bear gives you a boost as you give an oomph, which brings me there, and voila, grapes. Bear looked at the plan, and he looked at the grapes, and he looked at the tree, and he tapped his front tooth, and he thought, Fox, I'm thinking, if I just start chewing on that tree, <laughs> interrupted Fox. Beaver, 
Beaver. Beaver. My dentally challenged chum. Um, you mind the oomphing and you leave the thinking to me. After all, I'm a fox. Sly, clever, smart. And I know how to get grapes. Beaver shrugged. If you say so. Bear stood here, and Beaver stood on Bear's head there, and Fox and Fox stood on Beaver's tail. Pause. Bear stood here, Beaver stood on Bear's head there, and Fox stood on Beaver's tail. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox climbed out of the brambles. <sighs> Just need an inch or two more of scooch. Fox measured this and he weighed that and he turned around and he grinned. Why, porcupine, you short scooch of a fellow. Do you like grapes? Grapes, said porcupine. I suppose I do enjoy a grape or two now and then. Excellent. Look, listen, here's the plan, explained Fox. Bear stands here, and Beaver stands there, and you stand on Beaver's tail, and I stand on you, and on the count of three, Bear boosts as Beaver oomphs while you scooch, which brings me to there, and voila, grapes. Porcupine looked at the plan, and he looked up at the grapes, and he looked at his back full of quills. Excuse me, Fox, I have a suggestion. Perhaps if I point my quill, interrupted Fox. Porcupine, my little friend, let us not get all prickly. You just be a scooch and leave the ideas to me. After all, I am a fox, sly, clever, smart, and I know how to get grapes. Porcupine shrugged. If you say so. Is Fox listening to anybody? Nope. Bear stood here. Beaver stood on Bear's head there. And Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail. And Fox stood very carefully on Porcupine's back. One, two, three, and no grapes. <sighs> Fox rubbed his feet and he pulled a bramble from his tail and he uncurled his whiskers. <sighs> what might be helpful is a wee catch and swing, said Fox, with a pencil and eraser. Yes, a wee catch and swing should definitely do it. And Beaver looked at Bear, who looked at Porcupine. And the three shrugged and said, if you say so. Fox spied two tiny eyes peeking through a bush. Ah, possum, my dear. Do you like grapes? Me? Whispered possum shyly. Why, yes, I do like grapes. Thank you for asking me. I like grapes very much. Fox grinned. Excellent. Look, listen, here's the plan. Bear stands here. Beaver stands on Bear's head there. Porcupine stands on Beaver's tail. And I stand on Porcupine. And you stand on me. And so on and so on and so on, etc., etc., etc. Which lifts you, whose tail curls around here, then swings back to me, who I grab, ending up there, and voila! Grapes. Possum stared at the grapes. And she stared at the branch. And she stared at the plan. Pardon me, said Possum, but it all seems so confusing and complicated. Perhaps if I... <laughs> Interrupted Fox. Possum, 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 my pet. Now don't you worry those few hairs on your extremely unattractive head. Nothing to fret over and faint dead away. Trust me, my dear. After all, I am a fox. I am the one who is sly, clever, and smart. And I know how to get grapes. 
fast and blinked. If you say so. Is Fox listening to anybody? Nope. He's just making it so complicated and crazy. Bear stood here. Beaver stood there. Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail. Fox stood carefully on Porcupine. And Possum stood on Fox, ready to swing into action. One, two, three, and boost, oomph, squish, swing. <gasps> no grapes. What you doing? asked Gunk. Blast that bunch of fruit, grouse fox crawling out from under. There is simply no way to get those grapes and that is that. Possum looked at Porcupine, who looked at Beaver, who looked at Bear. I can run up the tree and toss them down, said Possum. And I can aim and shoot them down, said Porcupine. And I can cut them down, said Beaver. And I, oh, I, uh, I can give the tree a shake, said Bear. Fox glared. Oh, really? Then why didn't one of you say something before? Well, Possum spoke up. After all, you are a fox. Sly, said Porcupine. Clever, said Beaver. Smart. Very smart, said Bear. Oh. <laughs> Fox turned with a huff and a sniff. Well, do as you wish. I, for one, wouldn't even think of eating those lousy, rotten, stinking grapes. Now, even if I could, and they're probably sour anyway. Look at Bear, he says. If you say so. Look at, they're all eating grapes. All of them. All of them make that fox because he is not a good listener. The end. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that story. I love that story. It's a great reminder that other people have great ideas and we should listen to everybody and we should hear them out and see if we can make our idea better. So don't be like Fox. Make sure that you are listening to other people and treating everybody with respect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story and I hope you guys tune in for more great online story times with Miss Danielle. See you guys later. Bye.